Hello, my name is Simeon Neil Asher, and the trigger point of the week this week is the splenius cervicis muscle. Uh, previously, we've covered the splenius capitis muscle, uh, and we're going to look at the differences between the two. But suffice to say, let's have a look at it. Let's find it on the software. Uh, suffice to say, the difference, uh, apart from the anatomy, which is clearly different, is that the cervicis muscle tends to radiate pain in the cervical spine, somewhat into the head, some sort of posterior sort of head pain, uh, headache, but generally cervical spine and the back of the shoulder. So let's start with the anatomy. Well, in terms of anatomy, the, the cervicis um, starts, uh, takes its origin from the thoracic spine, from the T3 to T6 area, so beneath the splenius capitis. And in terms of insertion, it inserts into the C1, 2, and 3, the posterior tubercle of the transverse processes. So it runs from the th thoracic spine slightly upwards and laterally to the cervical spine. Im important uh, muscle in terms of cervical extension or side bending unilaterally, extension bilaterally and very much involved in whiplash, for example. That's a, a key classic kind of causative factor. But before we go into the cause of some of the trigger points there, let's look at the, the pain map. So an extensive pain map, uh, somewhat similar in some ways to upper trapezius, so uh, differentially diagnosing there. Uh, cervical pain, posterior um, occipital kind of uh, area, uh, headaches and also into the back of the shoulder and the upper sort of medial part of the scapula so kind of scapular thoracic pain as well so differentially obviously we're looking at things like the deltoid and the rhomboid upper trapezius as we said before now uh, because of its uh, anatomy um, the 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 splenius services uh, can be involved in uh, triggered uh, trigger points can be involved for a whole range of reasons so for example uh, posturally we're looking at things like upper cross patterns people that sit for a long time uh, looking at their screen at their keyboard so uh, um, this is this is a classic kind of uh, western or sort of high-tech uh, area of tension um, whiplash that we covered before, sort of momentum induced injuries, certainly hugely relevant to this muscle and, and anyone that's got neck pain or headache from cervicogenic uh, trauma, certainly worth looking at the, the trigger points in this muscle. Um, a similar uh, kind of also to levator scapulae in terms of its sort of uh, anatomy, so you want to have a look at that one as well. Um, the the other thing is uh, people that sort of intensive sports where there's flexion and extension but of course classically it's people looking down at their cell phone looking down at their mobile phone for hours at a time uh, and it's because it's an extensor we're, we're sort of having to work the kind of uh, the co, co the antagonists and co-agonists um, and this is one of them cervicogenic pain uh, cervical spondylosis, spondylarthritis, spondylopathy, uh, osteophytes, all these kind of things uh, which change the, the mechanics of the neck might manifest as uh, trigger points. Again, uh, possibly one to remember with someone with headaches, a spe very specific kind of headache. It's, it's really there right at the back of the skull. Um, so if someone comes in with a, with a headache in this sort of area of the skull, certainly worth looking at. Uh, in terms of anatomy, the, the cervices kind of wraps around and under the, um, the splenius capitis. And the most accessible part, in fact, in terms of surface anatomy is around about the C5-6 area. What you can do is as you palpate around the, the splenius capitis, you can just feel some of the fibers of cervices around C5-6. You roll over the shelf and they're right there, a little bit deep inside. Uh, incredibly powerful muscle to treat, really therapeutically incredibly effective uh, for someone with cervicogenic pain. Um, uh, so we can use trigger point sort of sustained release techniques like inhibition compression. It's a fabulous technique uh, for, for releasing this, uh, the trigger points uh, or IMS dry needling, obviously um, looking at the safety for those uh, different techniques. So this is splenius cervicis as opposed to capitis. In fact, we can just show you capitis quickly, just so that we can see the difference. You see the capitis, slightly different anatomy. It takes its origin higher up in the thoracic spine, inserts into the sort of 
just lateral to ligamentum nuchae, just lateral to, to upper traps and just medial to the sternomastoid, whereas the splenius cervicis uh, is much more on the transverse processes of the neck and not into the skull. So that's the trigger point of the week. I hope you found that interesting and uh, look forward to seeing you again and please follow us on uh, social media platforms and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching.